Welcome back. The National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Abdullah Adamu, has stated that the ruling party has achieved more feats or more than any other political party in Nigeria in the last seven years. That's any other political party in Nigeria's history, including the People's Democratic Party. Now, the ruling party has also reviewed its own primary election table, uh, saying there is no truth in their session. It had zoned its presidential ticket to any part of the country, thereby dispelling fear that it has zoned the presidency to the Northeast. Well, joining us uh, to talk about this, I'm glad to say we have an APC chieftain, uh, Kingsley Wali. He's also the convener of the Freedom House. Um, good evening to you, uh, Mr. Kingsley Wali. Unity House Foundation, not Unity House Foundation. I didn't mean I didn't mean to cause any commotion. Sincere apologies <laughs> for that. You know, in Port Harcourt, where we both are, are, are resident, that can cause a lot of trouble. But um, Unity yeah. House Foundation, sorry about that. We were we hoped we we had hoped to have been joined by Deron Odeyemi, who is a former publicity secretary of the PDP. We told that he's uh, busy at this point. But uh, uh, Mr. Kingsley Wally, what are your thoughts on on this statement by your party chairman? Um, that the, the APC federal government has performed better um, than any other political party in the history of Nigeria? Well, to a large extent, let me thank you for, first of all, for giving me the benefit and the opportunity of coming um, on your program one more time. Um, well, if there's anything that I've always said to people is that to admit that we are going through difficult times as a country. Things are really, really tough for Nigerians. But it's always important to, to remind Nigerians to say and ask them, when did this rain start beating us? That will help us situate a lot of uh, conversations properly. It's just not enough for you to say, oh, things are difficult. You need to find out um, like Chief of Afro Awolo will say, that we're always dealing with symptoms and never the causes of our um, problems. So I think Nigerians are noticing the, the symptoms of several years of planlessness. Um, like I always tell people too, when I grew up in this country, when I was growing up rather, I always had a five years, 10 years, 20 years development plan. And all of those just bamboozled. We were like operating with, uh, you know, generally what people call cruise. We we're just on the cruise in this country um, for most part of the 16 years that the People's Democratic Party was in power. Um, again, there's a legitimate argument by some members of the PDP who are saying that even at then, some members of the APC today were still part of that PDP administration that we cares today. And we probably say are responsible for uh, our issues. but. Looking at it generally, I want to admit that uh, it's the political class that has um, kind of uh, created the situation we are in today. So we cannot completely, completely exonerate all the members of the APC from the problems of Nigeria, but to a large extent, the consistency of our crisis can be attributed to the 16 years of planlessness by the People's Democratic Party. And um, if you if you are being fair, if you are being fair to um, the government of uh, Mohammed uh, Buhari, you will accept the fact that he came in one who had an, who had a crisis. There was a recession to the extent that our only source of um, revenue was just there. I mean, it was it was cheaper, you know, to to sell or rather, we, we were, it was costing us more. To produce that what we were selling so and then somehow we've just been managing and getting things done one way or the other to the extent that today you can sincerely say that there's there's um, an attempt a serious attempt at diversifying our economy you see most, most politicians and analysts will come on the uh, tv and they will say oh uh, we need to diversify the economy we need to be more productive our economy is too um, import dependent. And you ask what definite steps are being taken. Even those who have been in government still come and you know, tell us the same story of the need to diversify our economy. And because Nigeria's problem cannot be solved in a day, 
President Mohamed Buhari started somewhere, and he's been very consistent with that. That one way of getting out of where we are today is agriculture. And you cannot deny the fact that there's no movement in, in the agri sector. Our agroeconomy is improving. It's not where we want it to be, but there's, there's, there's a progress from there's progress from, from that end. So I'm saying that with consistency, you can see that system will grow. Unfortunately, those who want the economy to grow, who are talking about um, uh, um, diversifying the economy, are the same people who scream when you want to protect local production. So for mm. me, I think this government has been consistent to the extent that okay. um, trying to fix the economy, because okay. in the first place, it's important if you for you to identify what your problem is. So, so uh, uh, Mr. Wally, you're saying that um, what the situation, you're saying you would indeed agree that the All Progressives Congress in the last seven years has performed better than the uh, PDP or any other political party's administration uh, did. And you're saying that the issues are real. You're admitting that we have issues on ground. But it seems you're saying that it was caused by the PDP. Um, so... No, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't uh, um, um, Kofi, I would generally not say it was caused by the PDP. It's because the PDP actually exacerbated the situation with the kind of free spending. They made Nigerians feel like, oh, we are all okay, everything is cool. There was cheap funds, uh, corruption money was all over the whole place. People could just walk into um, NNPC, get an allocation paper. You go to the wharf, get an allocation paper, and you hit the road. And they thought it was um, that we were cool. But generally, we refuse to accept the fact that we were a poor country. We were a poor, our economy was not that where we were pretending to be. Because so, the lifestyle yeah. of Nigerians became something you, you had to, any sincere person will ask yourself, will ask himself rather, what, what is sustaining this? Is this sustainable? No, it wasn't. You went to the airport, the airport was full of private jets. You know, the lifestyle of Nigerians just went nuts. And you asked, what, what was the basis for this? Just cheap funds, corruption money. Right. And if anything, you yeah. cannot deny this administration of trying to create some level of physical discipline. In the okay, system. so, so, so you, you're talking about physical discipline. What is the APC doing differently in its time? Yeah. It's obvious for anybody to, um, any sincere person to say, one, for example, you, you look at the president, which is very instructive. You ask yourself, he's supposed to be the flag bearer of APC. It's supposed to be the flag bearer or the example of leadership. Not one single claim of financial indiscretion has been traced to the president of this country. That's a false stop. And you talk about corruption. Yes, corruption has not been completely eliminated. We still have challenges. But somebody is showing example, leadership by example. People still make money from the system one way or the other, but the most important thing is not a free for all thing. Okay, and so you, you're, you're, say, you're saying there's corruption, but it's not as bad as it was under the, a, the PDP. It's is that what you're saying? It's not just as bad. It's nowhere near where it was before President Buhari came into office. So, so uh, the, the PDP right. has argued let in me, the time me, past that let me, let me just, um, the corruption I under guess. the APC is, is worse than it was under PDP. What do you say to that? Anybody can say that. Anybody can claim, make any claims. But you ask yourself, where did General Buhari get the money that they are using to put um, the infrastructures you are seeing in this country today? Is it corruption money? Did, he manifest, did his father leave anything for him? That's from where the inheritance that is building infrastructures in this country. Kofi, the Onisha, the second, the, the Onisha Bridge. The second Niger second Bridge. Niger, Niger Bridge. It's always been in the pipeline. It's going to be completed this year. The Lekki Deep Port, it's always been on the pipeline. It's going to be completed this year. You're not even talking about roads. The Lagos Ibarra Expressway has gone through all kinds of phases, disputes and all of that. That will be completed this year. So I'm just trying to mention, I'm not even going into the railways. I mean, that's something I don't every, even a blind Nigerian knows. So what I'm saying, in physical terms, in, in terms of things that you can see, right, you can readily identify where government is working. All right. All right. If you come to the, yeah. If you come to the, sorry, um, if you one second. If you come to the east, 
People, I mean, you just need to go ask people on ground. You know, the problem we have is that people come to TV, go to radio, on the newspapers, say things that are not verifiable, things that rather they did not bother to go and check. For example, if you are traveling between Port Harcourt and Enugu, 80% of the stretch of that road, you can virtually go on a cruise. Are you, say, are you saying the Port Harcourt Enugu road, road is... Um is near completion because last time I used that road some years ago, the car was I used was never the same. Precisely what I'm saying that you can make a call, put a call to anybody that stays on that um uh, access and ask them what the state of that road is today. Yes, up till somewhere around Aba, the Portacot end is not being fixed. But I, they are, as I speak with you, people are on site working, anyone is the same thing. So, and these are the roads yeah. that I have been on so i cannot reasonably start making claims on things that i can't see i what, can make claims yeah what, what about what about um uh, you know the issue of 100 million naira apc nomination form uh, which is being easily bought by several uh contestants or aspirants and um, some are asking where are these people getting 100 million naira form from to purchase these forms Surely there must be corruption in the APC that the members of the party have made so much money to be able to afford 100 million naira. What, what, what do you say to that? Kofi, um, you're still in Lagos, right? I do. You're still in Lagos, right? Yes, yes, absolutely, yes, yes. How many gigards, Mercedes, that you see on Lekki Expressway in one day? And how much is that for one? How much is one gigard? Okay, okay. okay. So are, are, are you saying the, the members the point, of the party... The point I'm making is that the the, the, the the leadership of this country is such a serious business that I believe that anybody who is sincere and wants to be president of Nigeria must show it. That will be proof of it. For example, people say the money is too much. Don't forget that in, in developed climes, such things are done through contributions, donations rather. People who have interest in you, people who believe that you can deliver, you can do stuff, we just say, okay, fine, this man Kofi can do this job, let us raise money for him. A hundred people raising one, one million naira is one million naira. So if you're a presidential candidate, you don't have hundred friends who can give one million naira, you have no business going to APD, APC, 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 to go and pick for. Even for younger people, the party was gracious enough to say, okay, 50, I have 50%, which is 50,000, 50 million naira for any young person, people less than 40. My God, if you don't have 200 people who can give you 1 million naira, then you have no business running for the presidency of this country. The truth is this, it's bitter, probably, um, not, too, not too smooth, but the truth of the matter is that if you want to be president of Nigeria, you must show seriousness. Just for a second, imagine that the figures were anywhere near maybe 5 million, 10 million naira. You will have 400 million naira. How many people do you say go pick up forms? Embarrassing numbers. That's the truth, you must accept it. I'm not even thinking about the fact that of the amount. I'm saying, why should 20 people want to be president in APC? All right, so 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 let, let's move on. Uh, the, the economy is, is set to be in free fall. I mean, if you go through the business papers, you go through the economic um, reports and news, um, it's tales of woes. Um, Tony Lumulu most recently and famously put out tweets, um, I mean, that, you know, perfectly captured the saying that the rich also cry, you know, lamenting the situation in the oil and gas sector, lamenting the situation as far as the Naira was concerned. And uh, okay. Nigeria okay. is not even okay. able to okay. meet up to its obligations in terms of the OPEC quota. Um, we look at the Naira. Okay. The okay. Naira is in I, free I fall. Okay. Uh, yesterday I okay. changed the dollar, $100, for 585 Naira, sir. What's happening to the economy is unprecedented. What do you say to is this better? than what the PDP did. Now, I, I hate to say this. I, I don't want to sound personal because if you're running a business, it's um, it, your target is to make profit, right? Right? Okay. Our economy is so terrible, right? It's so, so, so horrible. People are hungry. Yes, I accept that. I, I agree with that. How much did you be imposed as profit this year or last year? The economy is so bad. The economy is so bad. How much profits are the banks posting? 
Because I want to identify the speaker um, that you just made reference to with the banking industry. If the economy is so horrible that the, the rich are also crying, do you bother to check the, the, the rock star lifestyle of bank executives? See, don't forget, I started by telling you that they are in this business to make profit. But those who make insane profits should not make insane statements about this country. Okay, we okay. have this country, yes. All right. F finally, uh, Mr. Wally, does, does the APC, looking at what the party has uh, been doing in terms of its performance, do you have what it takes? Do you have candidates or the persons with the character and the experience to fix the issues that you've you've admitted exist, as far as the list of names, uh, people who want to uh, vie for the office of president from your party are concerned. Come again. I didn't get to. Does the APC question. possess what it takes to solve the issues you've talked about? I mean, you've admitted that it's not all rosy. From those who've come out saying they want to be president on the platform of the APC, do we have people who are competent enough to fix Nigeria's issues? Let me, let me put it this way. What I, I'm going to return the question back to you. You are aware of the Asawaji years in Lagos. You are aware of what um, Asawaji Bola Ametinibu did in Lagos for eight years. You are aware, right? And the foundation he, he, he built for Lagos State. You are aware? Listening to you. No, no. I mean, you cannot tell me <laughs> you live in Lagos. It's going to be public domain. You are very aware of the sterling qualities and pedigree of the vice president of this country, who is also running, right? Of course, you are very aware that in the last seven years, this government had made moves or progress in the area of um, rail transportation, what you probably call the rail revolution. You are equally aware that not too long ago, Nigeria, Nigeria had to, if you're importing, um, if you're shipping to Nigeria, some parts of the ports in this country, you did uh, what they call wartime insurance in civil times. Nigeria has been, has, has been gotten off that, um, uh, what they call the blacklist. That's happened under this administration. All right. All right. You're equally right. aware that for several years, like I said earlier on, the Nigerian uh, Port I, Authority. I, I'm, I'm afraid we, we, have to, we have to go. No, no, I have to finish this, please. I have to finish this. Oh my, oh my. I'm afraid, Mr. Wally, our producers have just informed me that we are out of time. I sincerely apologize so that we will bring you on again. Definitely we'll do that. And I want to thank those of you who've been watching for staying with us. Plus, politics returns tomorrow, same time. King Wally is a chieftain of the APC and convener of the Unity House Foundation. I'm Kofi Bartels. Have a great night and see you tomorrow.